guys, today we're talking about self-care. My name is Viola Da Friday. Before we get into it, like this video, click on subscribe and get ready to share when it's over. So today we're talking about self-care, but with a twist. We're talking about what it looks like when you raise your children with a culture of self-care or what it would look like to have a culture of self-care in your home. Right. So the last few years, self-care has become this word everyone throws around. Oh, um, self-care and it, they're talking about the spa, self-care, bath bombs, self-care, just all kinds of things. Sometimes it has been almost monetized, like um, the more expensive it is, the more self-care-ish it is and all of that. I'm not going to be going too deep into that. Uh, maybe that will be for another video. But today I'm going to talk about what it would look like to somebody in the immigrant community who might come from, and by the immigrant community, I mean the immigrant community, the African and immigrant community. If you come from the typical African family where rest isn't really prioritized and um, can almost be seen as laziness, right? So if you, if you know what it's like to be taking a nap and have a parent come in and say, why are you taking a nap? You should be reading your books. Oh, I'm done reading my books. Yes, okay, but, but what about your brother's books? Have you read them too? Oh yes, I'm done reading that and we're on holiday. But what about the books for for the next two years? Like there's always something to do. Oh, you finished reading all the books, come and sweep this floor that's already gleaming. Oh, you finished doing that, go to the neighbor's house and help her do da 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 da. Like if you had that kind of upbringing, then it's possible you might be replicating that mindset of rest or self-care is laziness. So that's one side of what this video is about. Another side is how do we, as people who maybe didn't grow up prioritizing ourselves and our self-care, how do we raise children that don't have that problem? You know, that don't have to wait until they're in their thirties like me before they start to even consider and acknowledge that there, there are pain points in, in this areas of their life. So what does self-care for kids look like and how can we encourage it? So the first thing I would say is uh, rest and sleeping, napping is a big part of showing, of, of uh, teaching our kids um, how to take care of themselves. So even from early on, you learn from when you, you have a baby, you learn how to uh, okay, a baby is not sleeping. Yes, they might be having issues sleeping, but you can still take some steps by yourself. I remember crying to my doctor, my baby's not sleeping, he's always awake, plus he had colic, and the doctor was like, you know what, give him a routine, even when he doesn't follow it, just stay consistent. And it's crazy how much consistency and the power of consistency keeps showing up in different you know, facets of our lives. Uh, and he, I, I remember that she, was it a he for my first camera? But this doctor, you know, told me every time, it, it could be 10, 10 a.m. Um, every morning, or it could be 6 p.m. every evening. The moment you want it to be, become a time where this baby starts to nap, draw the blinds, dim the lights, you can switch music to something softer just do the same thing to kind of trigger in that child that it's time to take a nap or it's time to rest. And typically you'll be moving around doing certain stuff, tone that, cut that down by half. And I started to do that and I started to see change. And it was, it was really incredible for me. I'm like, you know what? This is why experts are always needed. So I learned that um, sleep and rest was very, of course, was very important for the child. But as we are teaching our children about self-care and we're creating that culture, we need to be firm when it comes to napping. We need to be firm when it comes to sleeping or even resting. And I think because now some of us are working from home and our kids are going to school inside the house, right? They're schooling from home. Because of that, um, I think digital detoxes should also serve as 
you know, rest, nap, and being, being firm with it and saying, okay, no TV from this time to this time, no iPads. Um, you have to, to just lie down and rest. Even if you're not going to sleep, let this just, let there just be some quiet time. So that's number one, sleep, rest, prioritize and sleep and rest. The second thing is making decisions for themselves, allowing them to choose by themselves. I'm not going to lie to you. I learned this one very, very late because in my opinion, I just thought as a mom, it's my job to choose for them until they are older. <laughs> and there was no age in my mind as to what older meant, but it was just, I'm their mom. Um, I choose what they wear. I choose what they eat. I choose what they do. It's my job. I wasn't seeing it as kind of maybe lording it over them as a parent. It was more, you know, what else would I do? This is my job. I think what, what changed it for me was I, I saw a few things with some some parents sometimes i'll be out and i would just see that in a way people of a certain race were relating with their very very young children in a different way they would have them choose right they would they would they would go to maybe somewhere to get fast food and be like what do you want and when they said what do you want they would actually wait to hear what the child child you know said and the child would say i want this 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 and they'll be like okay sometimes it would be okay right and sometimes it would be um the budget is five dollars you can't go beyond five dollars that is more than five dollars choose this and it was stunning at first it was almost like you're spoiling your kids but as as time began to pass and i started to relate the people the people would become to the children that we are and what we are taught from those actions I started to see that, you know, it's very important that you, you allow children to, to make some choices for themselves, even the little ones, some choices, at least. So now I, I, how I, I make that play out is if it's choosing clothes, right? I know that the weather might dictate to an extent what they wear. I know that if it's seriously cold, there's a certain jacket I would have them wear, or there's a way I would have them bundle up. I won't compromise on some things, but on some things, you know, choose. Let's see what you pick. Um, instead of the way we were raised, which was, what do you want to eat? I, I want, I want, I want A. No, it has to be B. It's B I have, and that is that. Instead of that, now I'm like, we have two options or three options. It's A, B, or C. Pick one, and I would be firm on that. So I know to somebody else it seems very small, but to me. This is a big deal. Allowing them to choose stuff at their age. At the beginning, there was something in me that would be like, I hope you're not spoiling these kids. But I had to just talk that part of me down. And I'm not, you know, I'm not being, I'm not judging anyone's parents. And I'm just saying like, our parents did the best that they could with the knowledge that they had. It would be an ultimate shame if with all of this knowledge that we are you know, we are exposed to, we, we, we don't make any positive change. The third one is not being forced to be friendly with people that they are not comfortable with. This idea of just forcing kids to be friendly with, you know, family, friends, even when it makes them uncomfortable, you see that your child is uncomfortable with a certain uncle or auntie or, you know, community member, but you keep kind of pushing them to get used to that person, pushing them to go visit that person, um, almost trashing their, their feelings instead of asking them why they feel that way, if there was a certain thing the person did, or even watching that person to see how that person behaves to your kid. I noticed that uh, one of my kids is very, you know, doesn't like to go to a particular place. And I, at first I didn't understand why he was like that, but then I noticed that that person used to put him down. Well, you know, not very obvious, but that person used to put him down and he was even more aware of the fact that he was being put down. For me, it was just, oh, this is the culture, you know, people talk to you this way. So I had to try to find a balance, you know, get him to understand that 
You know, sometimes people will be people. You can't ultimately change them. But at the same time, I learned that he he is an he he's not an adult, but he's a person with his own feelings, and he's allowed to also not want to be in the presence of someone who is putting him down, even if it's a joke constantly right so that's the third thing not forcing kids to be friendly with people that they don't really understand or they don't really trust the fourth is we need to protect them from the media like i said there's so much information the news is coming like a mile a minute there's so much coming in most of it is negative for some reason it's always been like that because bad news sells quickly but if we consume even for us consuming consuming the news or consuming media like that it's it also is harmful to us then think about how harmful it is for the kids to consume as much media as they might be doing now because many of them are schooling from home so i think a, a, a way to also teach them about taking care of themselves is to let them know that you want to limit how much they're exposed to because you don't think it's good for them it might also not be good for their age. It might be something that thinking about it would get them depressed, sad, or scared. I remember as a kid, most of the things I was scared of, I never told anyone. I was afraid, but I never told anyone I was afraid. But I carried that fear in me and it started to show in other parts of my life. So, you know, as parents, that might be something that we want to think about when we're teaching them how to self-care. Another part is letting them see a self-care because more than what we tell them is what we show them. More than what we tell them is what they see us do. Someone said, children learn more from what they see than from what we tell them. So I think it's very important that they see us do all of, all of these things that I'm outlining. I have to constantly remind myself that I need to do it too because my kids are watching me. Um, whether it's do they see us rest? Do they see me rest? Am I resting enough? Do, are they seeing me taking a nap? Are they seeing me, you know, switching everything off and just chilling? Are they seeing that? Um, do they hear me talking myself down? Are they hearing me talking badly about my body? Am I trashing my weight? Am I trashing my looks? Am I trashing just any part of my body, especially the parts of my body that I cannot change just the way they are? Do they hear me trashing my ears? I can't, I, there's nothing I can do to my ears, trashing my eyes. They're my eyes. So I, to, to prevent them from getting that habit to of also trashing themselves or looking down on themselves, you know. Um, do they see me practicing affirmations? Do they see me talking positively to myself and talking positively to others? Talking positively also about other people. Are they seeing that as well? Or are we raising them like in a, in a space that there's so much negativity and gossip? Because there's also, there's also that. And do they hear us um, affirming other people as well? When we're talking to people on the phone, are they hearing us encouraging those people? Do they see us giving back to the community? Do they see us giving some space with people who, are ter who, who might tear us down or who might treat us badly? Because if they see us allowing other people constantly to treat us badly, then they'll do the same thing. If they see that we have no boundaries, they will replicate that kind of life. So that's my video for today. Let me know what you think. How do you self-care? So let's, you know, how do you self-care? Are you practicing a culture of self-care in your home if you have children? And there's one question I really, really want to ask anyone who watches this, right? How do men self-care? I really want to know. I asked my husband, he said, we sleep. But is there something else? Is there something else men do? Or uh, do men, do men not think about it? Or do men see it as a woman's thing? So I've heard all of these things. I've heard sleep. I've heard, I don't think about that. I've heard that self-care is for women. You know, let me know what you think. Is self-care for women? Um, how are you practicing self-care in your home? How are you creating a culture of self-care? My name is Biodi Dafrede. This is The Immigrate Life. Don't forget to follow me at immigrate.life on Instagram. Uh, and uh, the blog is www.immigrate.life. Thank you so much for following, for subscribing, for liking, for sharing with your friends. Feel free to binge. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.